So good morning all and welcome to the Afghanistan Food Security Outlook Briefing. We'll be covering the period of October 2023 to May 2024. So kicking it off with our key messages. FuseNet anticipates food security conditions in late 2023 and, in, and into 2024 will be better than what was observed during the same period of 2022 and 2023. This is driven by a combination of factors, including a modest increase in the 2023 wheat harvest as compared to 2022, expectations for stable market supply, and the overall declines in food prices where food prices are generally below average. However, though, we will see that the population in need of food assistance will remain elevated, especially when the lean season begins. And we expect that 20 to 25 percent of the population in the country is expected to be in need of food assistance. Crisis outcomes are expected to expand in the winter months, especially in the north, as we see household food stocks from the 2023 harvest become exhausted and labor opportunities seasonally decrease. We will see stressed outcomes remain in and concentrated in many southern parts of the country where household food stocks are higher and some income generating opportunities will become seasonally available. Staple food prices have decreased in recent months due to the availability of stocks from the harvest, imports from Kazakhstan and the declining global food and diesel prices. The average national price of wheat is over 15% below the three-year average, and this has led to improvements in purchasing power across most of the country. However, persistently low, persistently low access to income is expected to continue constrained financial access to foods. And we will also continue to see economic barriers still preventing many households from meeting their food and non-food needs in the country. And lastly, for our key messages is due to the likelihood of El Nino conditions persisting through spring, above average cumulative precipitation is still expected for the 2023-2024 wet season in Afghanistan. This is likely to facilitate agriculture activities and favor crop development and production, notably in rain-fed areas. We also expect favorable pasture development, which has the potential to alleviate the drought conditions that we've seen in areas of the country for the past three years. While this favorable precipitation will have notable positive impacts, we are also expecting that in the spring, we will see atypically high levels of flooding, specifically from March to May in areas of the country as the above average snow snowpack melts along with the likelihood of above average precipitation and temperatures. So now looking at the current situation for Afghanistan and before diving into the food security conditions in the country, I would just like to situate ourselves here where we are in the seasonal calendar for in the country. So in October, where the current situation is situated, this is when we see winter wheat planting ongoing. We see the wrap, the wrap up of the second season harvest, which is notably of rice and maize. And many households are using the this time period to stock cereals for the winter through the sale of livestock, stocking, continuing to stock food from their own production, as well as what labor opportunities are available. In October, we do see the start of the winter wet season, which is a mix of either rain or snow, depending on the elevation that you are located in in the country. So first, taking a look at the economic conditions in the country, as the ongoing conditions are one of the main drivers of acute food insecurity in Afghanistan. And so despite some modest improvements and stability in economic conditions, Afghanistan economy generally remains poor after the severe contraction that we saw in 2021. The removal of Afghanistan from the international banking community and low government revenue continues to result in liquidity challenges and limited government investment. So looking at the annual inflation rates from July 2021 to September 2023, 
which we can see by the chart here on the left, that we can see that overall in 2023, we've seen a gradual decline in inflation rates. And in September, annual headline inflation stood at minus 9.1%. Now, alongside the decline in annual inflation, we've also seen the Afghan Afghani appreciate, appreciate gradually against the US dollar since early 2023. Now, the appreciation in the Afghani and the decline in the inflation rate can be attributed to a couple factors. This includes the government's stringent control on the currency as well as some market controls, which and well as, as well as mo specific monetary poli policies on by the central bank. Additionally, strict policies have been implemented to restrict the outflow of USD from the country. And we also continue to see inflows of USD through remittances from Western and Gulf countries, which have played a significant role in some of the economic drivers. Now, one thing to note that is a big positive as the Afghani has appreciated is this is, has helped facilitate steady imports for, of food, notably from Kazakhstan. The trade flows in Afghanistan have, are, have been smooth with consistent inflows of wheat, grain, and flour from Kazakhstan, as well as goods from other neighbors. And the stability in the Afghan Afghani um, has helped facilitate this as most traders operate in USD and this helps support sufficient funds to support the normal imports. It is also worth noting that diesel prices as seen by the chart here on the right have su substantially decreased by 25% compared to the previous year, helping maintain some price stability. However, in the last couple of months, there has been an upward trend in diesel prices, and this, is, this may cause some increases in transportation and food costs for markets, but mostly in markets that are in more rural areas and away from source markets. So taking a look at the overall food prices in Afghanistan, so this chart is showing the cost of the minimum, the chart on the left, excuse me, is showing the cost of the minimum food basket developed by WFP. And this in, is comprised of wheat flour, rice, pulses, and cooking oil. And we have excluded salt and sugar in this graph because they do not, are not as a significant kilocalorie source for households. And households will purchase these goods more often than the, um, salt and sugar and as, as they're kind of minor in the food basket. And so overall, the food bas basket has declined in the first part of 2023, as you can see here on the, in the chart, and has re remained stable in recent months. Now, when we look at the comparison from August 2021, which is when the Taliban took over Kabul, you can see now that we have the food basket has declined to similar, similar levels at this time. Now, there is some variation in food prices across the country and in more remote markets outside of urban areas and away from source markets. Staple food prices are likely even higher than what is seen on this chart. However, it is also noteworthy that the price trends in these markets are similar. So while in source markets, we've seen prices decline in early 2023 and then remain stable, we also expect that this is happening in rural areas in the areas outside of source markets. Now quickly, just to look at how much the specifically wheat prices have declined in October compared to January 2023, the three-year average and the same time last year, you can see this on the chart on the right. So overall, we can see that the price of wheat flour, both for low and high quality, has significantly decreased compared to these three time periods. So now taking a look at household purchasing power. So this graph here is showing the the amount of wheat flour that can be purchased for the sale of one sheep 
in the green color and then in the blue color is the amount of wheat flour that can be purchased for one day's labor. So purchasing power among households who have sheep to sell or can access casual labor have in increased in the first part of 2023 and reached levels similar to what was seen prior to the Taliban takeover of Kabul. And we have seen in recent months that there has been a stabilization of that purchasing power at a higher level. This is largely driven by the decreases in food prices. And it is important to note that this chart is looking at the average nationally, and we do see some price variation and terms of trade variation nationally in the country. Now, for a day's work and assuming that an average household comprises of eight people and purchases only wheat grain with their income, they could access in October about 10.5 kgs of food. And this amount of food would last a household about three weeks or so. And this is a significant improvement in the amount of wheat a day's waste can, can purchase. And is about 50% higher than what we saw in October of 2022. Now we've seen the, the most notable improvement in terms of trade for uh, casual laborers has been in Bamiyan, Gor, Takar, and Kunar provinces. Now, taking a one, sorry, one last piece to note on the casual labor, that while terms of trade have improved, there still remain many who are unable to enter the labor market and are not able to access these improvements. Now, taking a look at in more detail about, for the livestock to terms of trade. So the livestock market supply has been stable and we have, but at above average levels, as we continue to see some households sell at typically high numbers of livestock for income for both food purchases as well as winter stocking. Now on average, we've seen that livestock prices have been largely stable, as, though there, as with other prices, there is some variation nationally. Now the livestock to grain terms of trade have also been stable. And when a household has a sheep to sell, they can sell about 40% more grain. They can access about 40% more grain in October of 2023 than they did in October, 2022. So now taking a look at casual labor demand. This chart is showing the demand for casual labor measured in days of work available per worker per week on average nationally. Now, as you can see here in the gray bar, we can see a generally increasing trend of on the amount of labor that is available nationally within the country. So labor opportunities typically seasonally increase and peak from April to September as construction related employment in urban areas and agriculture employment in rural areas increase. We've seen continued increases in labor in October as we continue to see households engage in agricultural labor opportunities and other and with the delayed onset of winter we've seen some construction labor opportunities continued. In October a casual laborer could find about 2.5 days of work per week with at least one day of labor available per week across all provinces. And while the availability of labor has improved nationally, overall access to labor is lower than normal because of the high competition of labor due to the high unemployment rate and the re repatriation of those returning from Iran and Pakistan. This is, again, as I stated before, leaving many of people outside of the labor market unable to access this income or fully access this income source. So quickly taking a look at the forceful deportation of Afghans from Iran and Pakistan, which we saw a significant increase in October following the September announcements by the governments of Pakistan and Iran of their intention to deport millions of undocumented Afghan refugees. Now, according to IOM in October, although there are other estimates 
that have recently come out from UNHCR, which indicate a much higher number of people have left Pakistan. But for this analysis, we use the availability of the IOM data. Now, IOM indicated that over 145,000 Afghanistans returned from Pakistan through two border crossings. And the number of people leaving Pakistan increased from 200 people per day crossing these border points to 17,000. Now, returnees are predominantly going to Nangahar, Kandar, and Kabul provinces. And this additional population is putting further pressure, pressure on already weak labor markets. So in early October, Herat province was struck by three earthquakes, each measuring a magnitude of 6.3%. According to OCHA, 10 to 15% of the province population was impacted across a around 10 districts in the um, province. Herat province is located in the northwestern section of the country. According to OCHA, the earthquake destroyed over 10,000 homes and damaged over 38,000. Due to the loss of due to the loss of home, households have lost their food stock as well as livestock. Additionally, over 75% of those affected by the earthquake are currently living in makeshift tents and in open spaces with some families living in informal settlements or other tents. Now, in October, households have focused their recovery on cleaning homes. As winter is starting to set in, households are expected to face difficulty, increasing difficulty accessing food. Additionally, we are seeing that there are markets that have reported limited stock, and this is further restricting limit restricting household access to market foods. Close monitoring of Herat provinces and those populations that were affected by the earthquake is needed to be closely monitored in the com coming months. After, after the economy, the second major driver of acute food insecurity of Afghanistan is precipitation. And this year marked the third consecutive drought in the country, which was predominantly focused in northern areas. And the 2023, har 2023 wheat harvest recently concluded in October at below average levels. That was, that was mainly driven by the third consecutive drought. However, overall output was better than what we saw in 2022. Production varied regionally across the country compared to normal. In the the worst affected areas where we saw significantly below average production is in the northern rain-fed areas, notably in Balkh, Samangan, and Jajjan provinces. And production in these areas has limited farmers to produce sufficient food for only about one to three months. Now in the west, in provinces such as Gore and Baghdis, wheat production was also below average. Now in, in the south, where we saw where, where we saw farmers replacing poppy cultivation with wheat, we saw well above average production, and this significantly has contributed to the overall national production. Overall, in the rest of the country, we saw generally near average production, and overall in areas where we saw gen the near average or well above average, we are expecting that households will have sufficient food stocks to meet their household needs for about five to six months. So taking a look at the start of the 2023-2024 precipitation season, this map is showing the precipitation for the first two months of the season, which is October 1 to November 30th of this year. The light yellow to dark red colors are showing generally below average product, or sorry, production. It's pre precipitation is what we're looking at on this graph. So in October, precipitation did not significantly deviate from normal with only moderate millimeter deficits, even though we saw very red colors in the country. And in November, despite El Nino conditions, which typically favor above average 
precipitation, precipitation deficits have only increased. Now, with the precipitation, start of precipitation, we also see the start of winter wheat planting. And we saw winter wheat planting start at a lim limited scale in October due to the poor, poor soil moisture and delays in precipitation. Farmers are waiting for precipitation before starting widespread winter wheat planting. However, we are concerned that, there, that the, win the planting window for winter wheat closes in late December. However, it is important to note that if farmers do miss the planting season for winter wheat, that many often do replace winter wheat planting with spring wheat planting as precip when precipitation occurs and starts falling as rain in the February-March period in Afghanistan. So taking a look at vegetation conditions, these charts are showing NDVI values and NDVI is what FuseNet uses to understand pasture conditions and the general greenness on the ground in countries. So at the top, we're looking at the Samagan province, which is one of the worst drought affected areas of the country. And on the bottom is Nuristan, where we saw generally better precipitation and not as significant precipitation deficits. So from September to November, as you can see on this graph, we typically see pasture deteriorate in the country as livestock owners are harvesting and stocking grass and fodder for the wheat, as well as, win as winter conditions are setting in for in much of the highlands in the country. Now, pasture availability is lower than average across much of the country and is notably minimal in many areas of in, in the north. And now we are seeing that households are providing what fodder or straw that they have stocked as available, and as well as purchasing fodder and straw as needed. And however, though, due to the low average income and high and high fodder prices. Access to, access to fodder and straw has generally decreased. And this has resulted in lower, continued lower than typical livestock conditions and generally below average levels of milk. In the North and West where livestock are among the most important income sources, livestock body conditions are generally poor and among the worst nationally although it is important to note that they are better than last year as we are seeing households able to support their livestock additionally livestock herd sizes are lower than normal as we've seen a typical selling of livestock during the past year's poorer seasons and in the north where livestock is that primary food source we are seeing that households are continuing to sell their livestock to access food. And, and another important note as one of the impacts of the past year's droughts is that water availability for human and livestock consumption is worrying in Northern and Western drought affected areas where households are having to travel longer distance to access water. So now taking a look at humanitarian food assistance. So in October, WFP assisted around 3.2 million people with a, in, across the country with a 50% ration. And while levels of humanitarian food assistance have declined in recent months due to funding constraints, the reach of food assistance is higher than what was observed prior to 2021. You can see that on this chart here where we're looking at the number of people receiving food assistance from WFP from May 2020 to October 2023. You can see overall that after the Taliban takeover of Kabul, there has been a significant increase in humanitarian food assistance in Afghanistan. Now, humanitarian food assistance is being targeted in both rural and urban areas. Preparation for of food aid for the winter months is ongoing and WFP has nearly completed its preparations for winter stocking in for remote and hard to reach districts. This occurs where in areas where 
households typically become cut off in the winter time or where the roads become impassable. And for beneficiaries that reside in those villages where access becomes blocked during the winter typically, WFP typically provides a one-time distribution that will cover a household's food assistance needs for the winter months. Additionally, WFP is providing food assistance to those impacted by the earthquake in Herat. WFP has reached over 103,000 people with food assistance, as well as with other specialized nutritious products. The food assistance is helping to mitigate some of those food consumption deficits among those impacted. And WFP is also providing support to Afghan returnees from Pakistan as part of an inter interagency coordinated response in October. So taking a look at our assumptions for outlook period, which will go through May 2024. And before going through the key anomalies, I'd first like to situate us, situate us again on the seasonal calendar, where we look at the key events that occur that impact household food and income. So in November and December, we see winter wheat finishing up as the winter wet season really sets in. The winter wet season continues through February and coincides with the start of the lean season. Additional, and then in March, as we see winter conditions gives way to spring, we'll see the onset of the spring wet season where we see mainly rainfall as well as the start of spring wheat planting. The lean season will end toward the later end of our projection period. And it's important to note that during the transition from winter to spring, this is when the peak risk of flooding occurs in Afghanistan as we see rain falling on snow at higher temperatures, which leads to high snow melt and then water coming out from the elevated areas down into riverine areas. So looking at our key assumptions for the outlook period. Despite the current deficits that we see in precipitation in Afghanistan, FUSENET still anticipates above average precipitation for the 2023-2024 precipitation season due to the likelihood that El Nino conditions are expected to continue. Planting for winter and spring wheat is expected at near average levels. We are closely continuing to monitor what we are seeing for winter wheat planting. And again, it is really important to note that if households do miss winter wheat planting, there is the opportunity for more households to engage in spring wheat planting and households ex will change winter wheat for spring wheat and plant in the spring. Overall, prices of food and essential non-food co commodities are expected to remain stable and below average, supported by steady market supply. Access to income sources, such as from labor and livestock, will be seasonally low during the winter months and increasing starting in March in line with seasonal trends and then will peak in May at the latter portion of the outlook period. Pasture, pasture is expected to remain minimally available through the winter months, which is typical in the country. And then beginning in February and March, as snow melts and spring begins, pasture is expected to start becoming available again for livestock consumption. Remittances from Western countries are likely to be above average while lower than normal from Gulf countries as we've seen many returnees from Pakistan and Iran, as well as the non-conducive working conditions in these countries. Humanitarian assistance will likely continue at lower levels than we've seen in recent years. WFP plans to reach around 3.5 million people with food assistance in October and November, and then scale up to reach 6.2 million people in the 34 provinces of the country on a monthly basis between December 2023 and March 2024. Now the scale up is expected to reach about 15 to 20% of the population with about 50% of their kilocalorie needs. And FuseNet is, has a, 
access, this is based, this is the information that WFP provided, which is their plan. And given funding constraints and historical trends of assistance delivery, it is not likely that this plan will be fully realized and FuseNet continues to monitor what the expect, what and monitor the food assistance that is actually delivered in the country. So now taking a look at our projected food security outcomes. So the first outlook period is from October, 2023 to January, 2024. And food security in northern areas in central and northeastern air in the northeastern highlands is likely to decline as households consume their harvest and income earning opportunities fall with the onset of winter, reducing household purchasing power. In northern Afghanistan, where the third consecutive drought occurred, households will face increasing difficulty accessing food. Crisis outcomes are likely are likely across many of these areas. Households will likely have food for their own consumption through about in for the next couple of months in many of these areas. In the rest of the country, we FuseNet anticipates stressed outcomes are likely as households can meet their food needs by consuming their own foods and household purchasing power is generally stable for most households. Now, as we look to the February to May period, which is shown by here on the map on the left, which coincides with the peak of the lean season, we will, this is expected to result in increasing food assistance needs in both rural and urban areas. Crisis outcomes are likely to become more widespread across rural areas, notably in Northern Afghanistan. Labor opportunities are expected to be seasonally low during the winter months and households are expected to rely on decreasing food stocks along with some remittances below and below average livestock sales to access food. Specifically in Herat, households are likely to continue facing difficulty accessing food as they have below average purchasing power amid continuing efforts to rebuild their ability to access food and income normally. Overall, their income is not expected to be as su sufficient alongside food stocks to mitigate consumption deficits. In southern areas of the country, stressed outcomes are expected to persist. In these areas, households will have some food stocks as well as slightly better purchasing power to continue to close their food consumption deficits. In many urban areas of the country, crisis outcomes are expected to persist throughout much of the scenario period as we see many people continue to be outside of the labor market and have below average access to income. Thank you, and I'd be happy to take any questions.